Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Lucas. And we are two aspiring filmmakers making unnecessary commentary on famous movies. Each week, we will randomly select a film to analyze, discuss, and review. We will select the film at the end of each podcast, so you will have ample time to watch the movie before the next episode. We are slightly qualified film students. Hello! Hello, welcome back to another episode of Slightly Qualified Film Students. 20th uh, this episode. This week we're going to be taking a look taking a look at uh, the uh, thriller from Tom Ford, uh, Nocturnal Animals, um, starring Amy Adams, Jake Gyllenhaal, and uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Uh, yeah, 2016 movie. I, this is my second time watching it. Uh, it's just a... It's one of my favorites from the decade for sure. Um, I don't know. It's it's very intense, uh, and it's just a really entertaining watch in general. Yeah. Um, and I think that the performances are all super strong across the board also. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is my second time watching it. Um, I definitely got a lot of new stuff out of it uh, the second viewing. And for sure. Like, um, I didn't remember it that well going into the second time because I, I think, yeah, it was probably about two, a little over two years probably since I watched this movie. So uh, a lot of it was quite, quite uh, blurry for me. And it was a lot of fun rewatching this film. Um, a lot of stuff like shocked me again. I was still really into it. It's it, like kept up its intensity quite a bit. Um, it was very mm. suspenseful. And if on yeah. a second viewing, when you know everything that's going to happen and that that level of intensity is still there, I mean, yeah, for that's, sure. a, that's a good thriller right there. Um, I mean, I think it's that also just has to do with like the, the really cool way that the story like plays out. The yeah. fact that, you know, this it's like about Amy Adams' character, but at the same time, you're like following the the story like of the book that Edward's written which is like just like a really sick almost like a modern western type thing right with like sure so I, michael shannon so i i just like that dynamic the the way it uses the book to tell the main story and i just think it's really cool and definitely honestly surprises me that tom ford uh who wrote and directed this um by himself and he's like a you know he's a fashion designer iconic that he's able to pull designer. off yeah iconic fashion designer that he's able to pull off like this very nuanced screenplay it is adapted yeah. but um it's yeah, adapted but loosely be, um and yeah he, he well this was his second movie he he made a movie called mm -hmm. uh i think it was called a single man which i haven't seen yeah, never but seen it. got very good reviews as well um yeah and yeah i mean this this film is really good and especially from a directing standpoint it's not like you know he wrote a good movie and then they kind of just film like this film is like very precisely really well directed. directed um every yeah, frame sure. feels like really well crafted and i i think it probably helps quite a bit him being a fashion designer because like the colors the production the set decoration all of it is very mm -hmm. vivid and nothing feels out of place in this movie um yeah I mean, I was very impressed. I, I, yeah, especially, like, with Amy Adams' character. I just feel like you can definitely see his, like, fashion slash yeah. artistic roots. Uh, you know, especially at places like the museum with all the, like, yeah, modern totally. art. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It just looks really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, first time I, mean, I watched I think... this movie, I didn't realize who, like, who the director was. It was only now, like, when I was actually doing research, I was like, wait whoa this like I, I didn't put two and two together like that's very impressive yeah. very talented man um mm -hmm. yeah legend yeah <laughs> okay um let's i guess we'll move on to what? standout seats we, we could read out the plot oh. summary i guess yeah i forgot to do that's that that's true uh i have it here okay so um okay Susan receives a manuscript of her ex-husband edward's new novel and finds it very compelling However, the story forces her to confront several disturbing truths about their marital life. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's pretty vague. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, like, first-time viewers, uh, you know, you might... Because the film opens with Amy Adams um, for quite a while. You don't really get to see the book. But I think a majority 
of this film takes place kind of in the I don't know how to say it, like in the book. Yeah. Or like the... from the perspective of the characters of the book, mm-hmm. which was like a little confusing for me at first. Uh, not really confusing, but it's just kind of weird because, you know, the the film's kind of set up to be about Amy Adams, and yet most of it follows Jake Gyllenhaal's fictional Tony character. Yeah. Uh, and also just the fact that Jake Gyllenhaal plays the lead mm-hmm. in his book and also the author. Um is like a, a little bit confusing at least on my first viewing uh yeah it's pretty cool though when you think you know, about it because it's like it is yeah because she is she's reading the book so she has subconsciously cast edward as tony jake jones exactly. as tony so it's like i mean i was i was watching a lot of like a- analytical videos on this film and i was like whoa you can actually read really deep into this film like her subconscious yeah. all of this stuff like Be- her guilt um it's very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, it's very because deep. you know she she also says that you know he uh, there's a line where she says that he writes about maybe he should try to not write about himself mm-hmm. and then he says you know all authors write about themselves so that could be just yeah her thinking the characters between Tony Tony and Edward are similar which they are yeah uh, quite similar you know well, they're both yeah I think we should we can do an. Ana- like analyzation yeah, yeah. part sure. later let's let's move into standout scenes um do you want to go first sure i think that uh there's a lot of standout scenes for me in this whole film um and also i feel like uh there's not a lot of scenes that are like really more uh incredible than the others but i think that for me, the scene that always like just gives me the chills and is the most uh, intense is the scene where Tony's family and uh, Ray have their first interaction. You know, when they're mm-hmm. uh, driving and they get like knocked off to the side of the road. Because yeah. I mean, that scene is just so like you're you're just anticipating something awful to happen the whole time because this you know this Ray character just seems like an absolute yeah. Uh, unhinged Mm -hmm. crazy guy uh and yeah it just really it's so menacing that they're you know they're fixing his tire for him they're like so it's i don't know i think that the writing is super strong in that scene um i think the score is great and i really think that aaron taylor johnson's performance as ray is just captivating uh and yeah i mean that's that's like when the film takes the dark turn and it's really uh, soon into the film but you know once yeah his family is kidnapped from him that's just a powerful moment in the film uh, and it's always like just uh, i guess my favorite portion because it's just a yeah it's an intense yeah. moment yeah i mean like i thought that scene would be too obvious to choose but like at this point i didn't really care because that scene is so good like it's it's one of yeah. the most intense sequences I've watched in a I don't I don't even know when. Like I can't think of a a scene I've watched where I've just like even on second viewing been like in complete and utter suspense even though mm-hmm. I knew everything that was going to happen. It's 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 a terrifying scene and it's the thing that's so great about it is it's it's well it's rooted from Jake Gyllenhaal and Aaron Taylor Johnson how they play off, play off each other. But What's very cool about it is that Aaron Taylor Johnson and his, like, gang of hillbillies, they don't have a single weapon on them. Exactly. And yet you're That's still... That's what I was going to say. You're still terrified. Um, mm-hmm. He, he kind of, like, he kind of reminds me of, like, the Joker in this way that, you know, he's he's not, like, this, like, big guy. He doesn't have a weapon, He's but he's just so terrifying still and you have no clue what he's thinking and if he's going to do something all of a sudden and that keeps you in complete mm-hmm. suspense um yeah i mean that scene is just it's perfectly executed it's like it's long it's like 12 minute long scene and yet it, yeah it's it, really it long. leads up so perfectly and when it climaxes i mean it's just it's a really well crafted scene really well acted really well directed and it also looks beautiful with like the black highway with just the desert in the background um it's a very mm-hmm. creepy scene yeah uh i mean that's my standout 100%. scene too like I, I i don't even think in my opinion any of yeah. the other scenes like compare to how good that scene is it's just on leagues above but um yeah 
Yeah, I think types. like another like one other that was close is the scene where uh, Tony interrogates Ray, uh, mm-hmm. you know, trying to get him to confess. Uh, I don't know. That's just has some really strong performances too, especially Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that our standout scene is pretty obvious. The obvious choice. Uh, it's just it's crazy because you know you when i think when you first go in even the trailer they don't like tell you anything about the fact that this is going to have you know two separate narratives so when it it's cutting to the book like the first yeah exactly on the first viewing you're like oh my god what is happening like yeah it's just a absolutely great moment especially on first viewing so yeah yeah okay uh let's do our audience question we have one um nice and then this one will lead pretty nicely into our like um analyzing of the movie uh the question Mm -hmm. is what is uh your perspective or how do you analyze the uh ending scene of the film uh with amy adams yeah so i mean i think that basically what i mean what literally happens at the end you got amy adams meeting up with uh edward or trying to because she kind of realizes her mistakes uh i mean the book i think basically the the kind of the plot of the film is that you know she reads the book uh and then she realizes her mistakes um with her relationship with edward she realizes obviously that she loves him and not uh the man she's uh married to walker uh and yeah she arranges a dinner with him and then he doesn't show up (laughs) uh and i mean i think that that's just a great ending to the film because yeah i mean Mm -hmm. it's just kind of this character of uh susan realizing you know she's made all these mistakes and she tries to uh get back with edward and doesn't work uh, and her i think that yeah it's just it's a solid ending i mean I, I can talk a bit more about it and ending but i know how much uh how many layers that's on i mean for me at least i kind of just see the literal like she didn't he didn't show up uh so i don't know if there's what else there is to analyze maybe do you have anything that there's like more to that yeah like i was i was reading some stuff And one that caught my attention is a lot of people have been saying that Edward killed himself. Like, the symbol, like, he, because he does kind of kill himself in the book. So, a lot of people are saying the reason why. (laughs) Yeah, on accident. But they're saying, like, that could be, like, that's why he didn't show up, because he actually committed suicide. Um, Hmm. Also, it's like... I like the ending because it's it's like a revenge. It's this very sick revenge story almost, and that's what this entire film yeah. is about. Because when she gets the book, it's like it says for Susan, but it's not like in a heartwarming way that usually books are dedicated towards. It's like for Susan because this is like it's his like revenge to prove on her, her wrong. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then he basically captivates her in this book, and he he basically makes her fall in love with him again. And then, yeah, he, he stands her up. And yeah, it's it's a, it's just a really good ending. And, yeah, I think you can analyze it a bit more. Uh, there's a lot of people who are saying maybe, like, these were his, like, this was, like, his suicide note. Or, like, because uh, Tom Ford actually said that Michael Shannon's character in the book was meant to represent um, Jake Gyllenhaal's subconscious. And then, you know, that character has cancer in the book, so it's possible that maybe he has cancer and then these are his like last words also like there's a lot of other stuff you can read into it um i mean i didn't really get that necessarily uh that's interesting that tom ford said that uh that um mm -hmm. michael shannon's character bobby is his subconscious i never really thought about it like that but i guess that kind of makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it's a really good ending. We'll talk about it a bit more in ending. But, yeah, I think that leads into kind of, like, our, our analysis of this film. Uh, yeah, there's, like, this this film, when you dive deep into it, there's a lot to analyze. Um, lots of symbols, lots of, like, metaphors. 
But I think Mm -hmm. the big thing is, like, how this book is a revenge tale. And how, like, the idea in the book is that he loses his wife and his daughter, which actually happened to him in real life. Like, he he lost um, Amy Adams and she aborted his unborn child. Um, And this is kind of, like, his his anger coming out and like how he felt when that happened to him. And I've read like the character of Ray could symbolize either um, could symbolize Amy Adams, or it could also symbolize um, army hammer army hammers character. Um, And I'm not sure which one I actually buy into. I mean, but I, I think it would more symbolize Amy Adams character, I guess. Uh, because well okay first of all i don't think that i think that a lot of the characters in the book are like the book nocturnal animals uh like Mm -hmm. there are literal like parallels but i think also it's more about the idea of the book like i'm not necessarily sure that you know uh like michael shannon and aaron taylor johnson are supposed to be like uh you know representing a character in the real world or Mm -hmm. if it's more just the idea of uh, getting your loved ones stolen and then getting revenge. Uh, which I think it's more the latter. I don't, like, for me, when I watch it, like, maybe Tom Ford says otherwise, but, like, what I got out of it, kind of, uh, I don't necessarily, like, draw co- a literal connection between many of the characters, uh, aside from the lead and Edward himself. Um, so Tony and Edward. But mm-hmm. I just think that the book more just represents the idea of loss and then uh getting revenge which is exactly what happens in the real world as you were saying yeah uh edward loses his wife and then yeah he gets revenge except this time you know it's on her pretty much uh Mm -hmm. and like i like the i mean there's some symbolism in this film that's a little too on the nose for me but there's some that's like really good um for example the red couch Mm -hmm. like um that he finds his dead wife and daughter on in the book and then um also amy adams is sitting on the same red couch when she basically tells him that the book he wrote is awful and basically like that's when they start to like fall apart and she cheats on him so that red couch is like this symbolism for his him losing his wife um which is very cool Mm -hmm. also the green car so like when she actually um breaks up with him they they cut to a wide shot of him standing there and there's a the exact same car that you see in the book um that ray drives the exact same car is right next to him um which is also just like it's very like hidden but it's a very cool form of symbolism if you look into it and how that green Mm -hmm. car kind of represents um ray taking his wife away from him which is army hammer taking amy adams away from him um yeah so there's a lot of stuff to read into this film um i think we kind of covered a fair bit of it but the big ones it's it's a very deep film if you really read into it and i like that i like that quite a bit yeah okay so uh let's take a quick break and then we'll hop into the actual review okay all right you're back back and we're hopping into the review yeah story and originality out of 10 um Mm -hmm. i i mean this is a really original film um oh yeah interlacing three totally uh like different storylines together very seamlessly um i mean yeah i know it's adapted off a book but it's very loosely adapted um i mean the book's not even called nocturnal animals uh, it's called like Tom and Susan or something. It's called Tony, Tony and, and Susan. Susan. Yeah, and, and that like the book is very. Uh, it doesn't really dive as deep into Susan and Edward's relationship. It's just like very like whatever what happens in the book, mm. uh, in both films from like the plot synopsis I was reading. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that this is just the way that this story plays out is just really cool i love that you know this is a movie that's kind of about amy adams's character and her life but it like you know uses the book to tell that story and to reveal 
uh you know the the like the past like timeline of her and edward and her mom totally uh and i mean it also just uses the book as a way to give us the action sequences of this movie yeah keep uh, it entertaining like just from an entertainment mm-hmm. yeah standpoint you know just having the whole film be like a, a sad romance almost would you know not be as exciting as telling us that same message but using it on this like crazy revenge crime yeah thriller yeah uh yeah i just i think that's a really cool idea definitely super original Mm -hmm. haven't seen it much else yeah and it's also just a super cool story um that we're already talking about how like deep it can go and how much you can analyze from it it's very cool Mm -hmm. uh very well done regret yeah regret revenge there's a lot of like very on the nose themes of this film um yeah and and i honestly i just really like how we don't see jake gyllenhaal um in his present self throughout the film like we only see him in the book and his old self yeah so we don't actually know what's going on and also it it's like this is more about Amy Adams' subconscious because that's basically what we're seeing throughout the film. We're seeing her memories and we're also seeing what she sees when she reads the book and then we're seeing her present day life. Um, and it doesn't seem like that when you're watching mm-hmm. the movie, but if you think about it, yeah, this is all basically happening in her mind. Um, and yeah. that's very cool and it's a very cool approach to the film. Um, yeah, and, and then it gives us kind of that unreliable narrator thing that is... Uh, yeah just adds to the overall story um yeah i think this is and i i just love the the open-endedness of it all uh it really doesn't tell you much about what's uh like you kind of have to fill in the blanks for yourself as we attempted earlier uh and you know you could watch this film and dive super deep into it or you could honestly just watch it you know take everything at face value and just be entertained by tony's like revenge on ray uh so i i like that dynamic also yeah yeah and it's it's not too uh, open i gave either, it which is nice yeah yeah exactly yeah. uh i gave it a nine percent out of ten yeah same i gave it a nine out of ten wasn't quite at the ten but very close for me actually um it's very, very strong. strong it's very strong okay uh mm-hmm. moving into beginning out of five um i mean should should we talk about the opening tile sequence uh first and foremost well, I mean, it's definitely a shock when you first uh, see the film, but at the end of the day, there's, you know, it's just kind of uh, Susan's art yeah. uh, show. I don't know what kind of art you would call that, but <laughs> I guess it's technically art. I, so. I was listening to Tom Ford talking about it. He basically said that... Um, it was meant to symbolize, like, these women being, like, super free and having no care in the world uh, to what other people think about them. And then you instantly mm-hmm. cut to Amy Adams, plastered in makeup, in her, like, world, trying to be perfect. And it was supposed to be, like, this this form of irony. Um, I mean, yeah. it's, personally, I think so. it's a little, little too much. Um, slightly. Yeah. It's a very shocking way to start your movie um but uh i mean i get i get where he's coming from and i understand what the metaphor is yeah um i mean yeah like when i look at the beginning i'm looking at kind of yeah yeah i'm not i'm not scoring Uh, it on my so uh, yeah yeah. so i think like i think that the opening 10 minutes uh are like they're fairly uh they're fairly vague I guess, in Mm -hmm. a way, Um, you're not getting introduced to too many details at once. It's just kind of like opening set up for Amy Adams character, which I like. Uh, But the opening 10 minutes just feel like they're the only slow moments of the entire film. Yeah. Uh, So like when I rewatched it, it was like the only I was kind of bored. Yeah, I agree. Um, Just because very little is actually said about uh, anything that's going to transpire. You're just learning about Amy Adams character. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know it's just it's very mysterious her life is very mysterious you know she's got this big house you never really explicitly told her you know journey to fame or if she's famous or if she's getting all this money from her husband so like i think it's well done but at the same time i think it might just be a tad like yeah 
vague, I, I guess. I honestly think that... Um, but I, 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 I like it. I think that the beginning would have been better if if um, her and Army Hammer's relationship was more important to the film. Um, because, like, you have, like, yeah. an eight-minute conversation between the two of them at their kitchen table, which isn't all that interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's sort of set up for a character, but still, it's not it's not that interesting. Um, and it's it's pretty bland. <laughs> like, they're, they're just talking, and it's just, like, yeah. medium close-up to medium close-up. Um, and if that was set up for something later in the movie that was going to happen, like, between them, then I think it'd be pretty cool. But, you know, she she figures out he's cheating on her, but nothing really comes of that. She just kind of knows, and that's it. Like, they don't really... You don't really see him again after that. Yeah. So it, it feels kind of and, important. And I feel like, to argue that it's for character development, you can, but it's just, like, you get waves more character development out mm-hmm. of her... Uh, later in the film like i feel like you learn a hundred times more about her once she starts reading the book even at the party like, like when she's they... talking to like her friends like yeah, i feel like that was way exactly. better character development than that like eight minute conversation with her and her husband that really could have been shortened yeah. down to like you know two minutes um two minutes yeah yeah i mean because i think that the the objective is you know he's leaving her he doesn't yeah. he's not very interested in their relationship mm-hmm. she's sad about yeah. that boom like you don't need you to don't have to really drag that out that um long. and i mean also i think that the beginning is kind of like not as well shot as the rest of the film like not it, it's still really well done and the the location selection is incredible that house that she lives in it's beautiful but like mm-hmm. the actual like it's just not as interesting. It's not as interesting. Like, their conversation, they're literally just standing across counter and talking. There's no movement. They don't walk around the house. Like, even if they they're had that conversation, but they were walking around the house, that would have made it way more interesting and fun to watch instead of them just, like, standing yeah. there and talking. Um, I actually wish we got to see more yeah, of the house. Yeah, show it off a bit uh, more. Because I feel like they could have just had some crazy production design, because they already do in the short little snippets we see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a... So it's a fairly yeah, okay it's, beginning. It's pretty, it's pretty average. average. Yeah, I give it a three out of five. I gave it a three also. I think it's honestly worse on rewatch because mm-hmm. the first time I watched it, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't really that bored. But upon rewatch, I kind of already knew that the conversation didn't have that much significance. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I guess she just has some nice like it's a very like gray scene, especially in what they're wearing. I kind of like that look. Yeah, the look. Has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, okay, let's go into ending. Now, uh, I think this is a great ending. We've already talked about it. Um, me too. Super strong ending. It's a ending. super strong ending. Uh, it's the I perfect mean, it level of ambiguous So me. hard. It's the perfect <laughs> level of ambiguous. True. It's like, it tells you enough that you, you have enough information to fill in the blanks, but it also is ambiguous enough that it's like it it feels like it ended on the right note and it didn't overstay its welcome um and i think that's Mm -hmm. really good and yeah honestly of all the movies we've done so far i think this might be one of the best endings um probably i especially love right before she's going to dinner that parallel editing to the heartbeat of tony's character dying and susan uh, in the bath, uh, I don't know. I just feel like that's just such a powerful way to end the book. Yeah. Uh, having you know Tony's character die, and then she you know has her full realization that she's made a mistake in her life, and she needs to make amends, find Edward again. Yeah. And then boom, he like gets revenge on her, and he doesn't show up. Like I don't know. That's just a super hard hitting end. I also think it's uh, the score is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, the score the is gorgeous beautiful. in that last scene. Um, and I also think it's really interesting how he like tells her uh, choose a time and place, and she decides to mm-hmm. choose like a very high end, very like materialistic restaurant. Um, and it's almost as though he knew she would yeah. do that. Because I, I wonder, like, if she had chosen, like, the restaurant where they had their first date or, like, something, like, a bit more low-key, if he would have shown up. Because maybe then he would have been like, oh, she changed. Whereas she's, like, she is in this, like, super beautiful, very expensive dress. And in a restaurant yeah. that is clearly, like, 
insanely uh like oh ins- it's gorgeous like it's a gorgeous restaurant but you know i love the greens yeah, of the totally. restaurant and the greens of her outfit it's so um, pretty but yeah i i think it's Man. a really cool ending a lot to analyze from it and i mean for me easy five out of five for the ending here so easy five out of five uh yeah i mean to to me this is like the perfect way this film could have ended uh because i don't i don't think you can end it with tony getting revenge you gotta like give some closure for susan too yeah totally uh, i love that so yeah five out of five um okay um uh screenplay screenplay and dialogue. dialogue cool cool i think that the screenplay like the writing for the characters of ray and tony like in the book is really well done Mm -hmm. um they they really develop those characters well even though they're not real yeah like uh to the to the real story uh you know this i just you feel so much you want tony to get justice yeah and this oh my god ray is just so evil and it's so perfect uh i i think the one thing that's kind of lacking for me i think the dialogue like susan's character has it i don't know it's not like super well written in my opinion like it's good dialogue but uh i just think that especially because it's you know tom ford's not necessarily a writer by trade i think that some of the conversations she has are just kind of like written very literally and like just kind of boring um yeah uh like between her and her assistant uh they almost feel a little bit cliche when she's like have you ever felt like your life is yeah uh something you didn't want it to be i don't know it just seems like a little on the nose totally i feel like there could have been more nuance in some of the dialogue uh but other than that i think it's a super strong screenplay um especially the way he's able to so seamlessly navigate the three narratives it's Uh, it's really impressive um yeah i mean my my thing with the screenplay it's really well done they they go through all the three storylines like very well um and yeah like you were saying that they have taken a first of all we're watching a fictional movie and then we're watching a fictional story within this fictional movie and yet we're mm-hmm. st- we care so much about these characters that that mm-hmm. like we know aren't real and aren't even real in the movie and yet we are terrified in those scenes and we want Tony to get his revenge um, and that's, I think, well, first it's performances, but also just really good writing in that sense. I think all of the, like, book sequences yeah. are written really well. Um, I think that, like, uh, Tony's meltdown monologue, the dialogue is so good. Like, really well written. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jake Joan Hall, like, nails yeah. that. Um, yeah, my thing, similar to you. Amy Adams stuff, it just wasn't as interesting. And also, like, I would have... I She's a good actor. I would have liked them to, like, give her something. Like, they didn't really give her a whole lot. Like a breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, even if it was just, like, an argument between her and Army Hammer. Because they could have done that. They could have had her confront because him. Because her argument between Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, you know, when yeah. she's breaking up with him. I mean, that just puts on full display her talent. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like that, yeah, they didn't utilize I felt her like for... her, like, the storyline of her just living her present-day life, it wasn't that prominent in this film. And this film isn't insanely long. It's two hours. Um, I feel like they could have added, like, you know, ten minutes to this film and just given her a little bit more to do, um, whether it's a scene with her and her mm-hmm. husband or a scene with her and her daughter, just something a bit to even just, like, show off her character a bit more. That, that's my only complaint about the screenplay. Other than that, I think it's a really well-done screenplay. Very original, very cool, uh, super entertaining. But yeah, I gave it a 7 out of 8. Yeah, I guess, yeah, the only other thing I think is I think Michael Shannon's character could have been like a tiny bit more developed because he kind of just decides that he doesn't care anymore. Like, obviously, I know he's dying and he's going to retire, but... Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, his transition from, you know, playing, like, the cool sheriff to, like, just straight-up vigilante, like, taking matters into his own hands murderer is, like, it's a little abrupt, but I think they pull it off decently well. So, yeah, I gave it a 7 out of 8 also uh, for screenplay and dialogue. Super well done, especially considering, you know, it's Tom Ford's... Tom Ford's solo on this. Yeah. uh, He doesn't even have a co-writer. Wrote it, directed Uh, it. 
it's great Mm -hmm. um very impressive Yeah. yeah okay soundtrack out of seven now the thing about the soundtrack is they don't use music very often in this film but when they do, but when they the do, soundtrack is gorgeous. Oh. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, like yeah, that final yeah. that final uh, score when she's sitting alone in that restaurant, it's just it is beautiful. And I, I mean, the theme yeah. to this yeah. film, the piano theme is just oh man, mm-hmm. it's it's melody is like so haunting, so haunting. So, like, it's so yeah, good. I love it's, it. It, yeah, it's it's gorgeous um and i actually really like that this film doesn't overuse music because there's a lot of scenes in this film that's very intense and i feel like music would have taken me out of it almost like the highway scene i feel like mm-hmm. it didn't like they they don't really use much music in that scene and i think that's why that scene is Those so like terrifying yeah. yeah um and yeah music isn't super prominent in this film but when they use it it's very strong very like important and like really yeah. adds a lot of emphasis to the scenes that it's put on top of um yeah I, yeah i think especially in the scene where tony is confronting ray at the very end right. uh in the shack the first time we get to see the inside of the shack oh yeah. my god like the the building score there is just so um it just gets you like it, like it's so intense like you're you're so mm-hmm. nervous about what's going to happen. Like you really want Tony to just kill Ray. I guess. But <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that I can't give it uh, like perfect because uh, it's a score, you know, I'm not necessarily going to listen to it mm-hmm. uh, by itself. And yeah, they didn't use it very often. Uh, like very mm-hmm. often. Um, yeah. What'd you give? Yeah. It? I give it a six out of seven. I mean, it's a very high yeah, six, same. but like, yeah, you, there's only like maybe four like scores in this entire movie. They're gorgeous, but yeah, I don't know if I would listen to them either. Yeah, six oh seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I listened to them while I was writing my some extra ooh, notes. Nice. Uh, just get me in that full vibe, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I, it's, it's just an amazing score. Uh, it's yeah, it's really great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, production design, costumes, and set. I mean, it's a Tom Ford movie. Like the costumes yeah, are You'd expect the costumes amazing. to be amazing. They are and they are beautiful. Uh, every single costume um whether it is Jake Gyllenhaal during his like the book um and a- every single costume that Amy Adams wears is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Mhm. Um yeah. Yeah. I mean, even like I think the production design too. Yeah, I, production is really strong. strong. I mean, I feel like a fair bit of this film is location selection, um, but when mm-hmm. they yeah, especially in the in the yeah, desert. But when they use the production design, it's it's very cool. Like the set decoration is just amazing in this film. Like the yeah. paintings in the background on like the houses that she goes to, the walls, the color of the walls. It all fits the color palette. It's it like I was saying before. Everything seems so stylized and so focused. Um, yeah. Every every frame feels and, like he's handcrafted it. Yeah, and I also just love the like almost the contrast between Amy Adams' house, which is super modern, um, and just really highly detailed, and then the contrast between that and just like the empty Texas desert. Yeah. And the like run down shacks of the book world uh i just, i don't know i love that contrast it's also cinematography with the color grade contrast totally. but yeah i also i just think in general i like how they yeah. decorated her house and her art gallery as a very um blank like they're beautiful but there really mm-hmm. isn't anything there and it kind of is a testament to the life she's living like there's no like clutter mm-hmm. it's very clean organized and there's like nothing it's just like a white wall or red and it's very wall. muted yeah, it's very it's muted. very like gray mm-hmm. and black and yeah. white kind of colors very monochromatic very cool uh um yeah. yeah uh the only thing i have against the set decoration in this film is i feel they use some paintings in this film uh for symbolism i think the biggest one is like revenge revenge. um and i personally i just find that too on the nose for me i feel like it's a little too like obvious 
and it's like they're pushing a little too hard to be like yo this is a revenge film it's like yeah i got that yeah. um even the cow like <laughs> even the cow like as beautiful as that shot was with it in that like blue serum blue tainted glass with the cow pierced with a bunch of arrows it's just too on the nose for me i mean that's like right before um the big showdown in the book and it's just i don't know like even the painting of like those two guys shooting each other it's like i just felt like some of the choices for the art in this film were just a little too like obviously symbolism um especially when all the other symbolism feels like very nuanced and you have to look for it and then they, you know, just put like the very obvious revenge painting, and they even talk like talk they even about like it. mention yeah. it and have a conversation totally. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my only thing about pr- the production design. But I mean, it's gorgeous. I mean, as you would expect from a Tom Ford movie, uh, the set decoration and the costumes are gorgeous. I loved it. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to give it full marks. I give it a five out of six. Yeah, same here. Five out of six. It's not perfect, um, but it's still very strong. Very strong. Location selection. Oh, there are some sick locations. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, that desert. In the w- desert. <sighs> when he walks out of that desert in the day after, like, that whole highway scene with, the, like, the rising yeah. sun in the background, I'm pretty sure that was, like, CGI. But it was still absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, just amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, even, like, the restaurants, like, even with Amy Adams' character. Yeah. Uh, the the restaurant at the end is just amazing. Oh, the um, the, the shacks, like yeah, the RV totally. and Ray's house. Yeah, they're like so, yeah, just country and run down. I mean, and yeah, I love the yeah. contrast. The it's, the art mm. gallery, like when she's walking up those stairs, and it's just all white, and it's like this like row of white stairs that cross over each other. Such a cool location. Mm-hmm um yeah location selection is like superb in this film i didn't feel like there were any locations that felt uh lazy they all like and it's very easy to get lazy location selection when you're like just in the desert all the time but it felt like every section of the desert that they were filming in was very like focused and like yeah well chosen and they were flexing it too you know they were getting the uh the the like just to show time passage, just getting some shots of clouds, which they didn't necessarily need to do, but they're, I mean, they're just flexing that location. Yeah. I love it. Totally. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, this is an easy six out of six for me. Um, all of the locations were, there's no bad locations, no bad locations. They're all top notch. Um, yeah, Mm -hmm. I think that is good. Let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with cinematography out of 10. Hey, we're back. Back at Hopping it. Hopping into cinematography out yeah. of ten. Oh, I love the cinematography in the the cinematography in this film. Uh, I like that because they have these two very uh, contrasty feels, like the modern and the kind of old Texas vibe. That they can literally get away with having like two different, really nice looking like uh, color palettes and cinematography styles. Um, yeah. Because the whenever they're shooting with you know Amy Adams, it's very uh, stable. It's very like um, like bourgeoisie kind of thing. Mm-hmm, uh, it's totally. very nice. And then you know you cut to these like intense close-ups and these like oranges and yellows of the Texas desert and the shaky uh, some shaky handheld too. Um, yeah, I mean it's kind of expected that when you have the perfect location selection that you're going to score high in cinematography. Cause I mean, all you got to do is, you know, once you have these beautiful locations, just set up that yeah. camera and it's free. Uh, like I said, I think especially the wide angle shots, uh, of Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Escaping Ray in the morning are just amazing. I love the framing oh, yeah. with like the twisty road in one like corner of the shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I just think in general the cinematography is super super strong. Um, it's not like I think the only thing that kind of annoys me is that they don't really have like that uh, many creative angles or anything. Like it's fairly fairly mm-hmm. standard MCU's uh, yeah. that they cut between, which is fine. Uh, it's just not like as uh, 
visually enticing as some yeah, of the I other agree. films. It's not as like interesting, uh, but I think in general it's just very beautiful. Yeah, like I think there's some there's some really great like framing um, throughout the film uh, that really shows off the set design and the set decoration and the costumes. Um, I actually really liked the drone shots at the start of the movie that they're kind of interlacing. Mm -hmm. uh with amy adams at her art gallery it was very like it had a very experimental feel to it yeah very cool um yeah i mean like the colors in this film are very strong and very focused um and they work really well for the cinematography um and the lighting is just really good like really good lighting i really like that parallel the parallel shots they have of amy adams lying in bed and jake gyllenhaal lying in bed in the story so tony um and he's like facing in the, the motel different direction. with like super yellow super brown gross vibes and then she's in her bed in like blue and white with very like nice blue white color grade and it's yeah. a very cool contrast i like that um the shot that i really liked was when they meet uh like for the first time in a while in new york during like yeah. the flashbacks and they're that in they're like downtown poker. new york yeah, and it's snowing, and they're, like, walking through the snow with this gorgeous, like, traffic light bokeh. It's a beautiful shot. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and, yeah, the, yeah, this film is just fun with the cinematography. It might not be as creative as I may have wished it to be, but the fact is that they get to do three different sort of vibes throughout exactly. the film because you have three different storylines, and I like that they differ- differentiated all the three storylines with their visual storytelling. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty strong cinematography yeah exactly you get the beautiful vibes from amy adams just kind of like the standard almost like romantic vibes of the past amy adams and then the just the grit of the uh the book yeah i think it's hella good (laughs) yeah i gave it a nine out of ten i mean yeah that's my thing too i just felt like there's too many like medium close-up to medium close-up i would have liked some tracking shots a little bit of like just experiment a bit more but yeah it's gorgeous nine out of yeah ten. i gave it a nine too i think it's honestly like a low nine because it's not necessarily the most beautiful film i've seen ever uh and yeah would have liked to see some like interesting camera movement or something but yeah still a nine yeah okay so let's go into editing out of eight um i actually think the editing is very strong in this movie especially yeah. like the fast-paced sequences like the highway scene I think the highway scene is edited, like, superbly. Um, The cuts are amazing. It's cut so well. Super fast-paced. Like, really quick cuts. Um, And it just adds so much tension and chaos to that scene. Um, And I think a lot of that scene is done through the sound editing and also, like, the acting screenplay, obviously, but also just how they cut every shot together. Mm-hmm. It's terrifying. When they show Aaron Taylor Johnson, when they show Jake Gyllenhaal's reactions, it's it's really well done. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that, for the most part, the editing is excellent. Uh, but I think sometimes, just too many fade transitions. No, but there's a few fade transitions. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that sometimes, like near the end of the film, to transition between scenes, they'll just cut to black for a few seconds and then cut to the next scene which i think is kind of lazy um i think you can find more creative ways to transition especially since earlier in the films you have these like super cool edits where you'll have like uh past jake gyllenhaal standing in red light and then cut to the fake or the you know the fictional jake gyllenhaal in like the exact same frame also in the red light like that edit is just so cool and then sometimes you'll like just cut from one Amy Adams scene to the next and just put a black screen in the middle, which I, I just, I don't know. That just kind of like pisses me off because it's like you're a, you got such a big budget. Can't you just find a better way to transition between the scenes? Uh, but like that's just kind of a nitpick because I think in general, like the editing is very strong. And uh, aside from those transitions, I think that there's some really creative ways that they switch between narratives um yeah i think uh, yeah other than that other than like the black screens the other thing is that like the cheesy jump scare when she's looking at the baby uh crib on her friend's phone i was like oh, yeah i was like okay yeah. <laughs> that was just kind of 
unnecessary, but okay. Uh, I think that was kind of cool because it shows that like the book is like actually affecting her, and now yeah. she's seeing it in her normal day life. I just yeah because yeah. that means he's getting to her. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I I I think that with editing, it's just kind of nitpicks and small things. Um, but yeah, I think in general the editing is super strong in this film. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't bothered by the fade transitions in this film. Um, I, I know there were a few, but I didn't actually like notice them that. No, much. the fade transitions. Really I'm not really mad me. at. Uh, yeah, it's just the the black like in between the scenes. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like I personally like cutting to black. <laughs> I do too, but I mean, I like when you do it bits. multiple times between scenes and in the same film, you have like super stylized transitions between the narratives. I just think that you could find a better way uh but yeah i gave it a six out of eight i still think it's very strong um Mm -hmm. just not quite on the upper echelon yeah i I thought the ending was very strong in this film i actually was more impressed by the ending um than i have been in a lot of other films so i gave it a seven out of eight because uh i don't know i was a bit more impressed with this ending than i have been lately with the films we've been watching facts okay Uh, fair enough yeah seven out of eight uh acting yeah okay time, acting yeah. out of 10 mm. i mean i don't think i can really list a uh like an, a bad performance per se in this film i think that this like the starring for aaron taylor johnson michael shannon jake gyllenhaal and amy adams just give incredible performances especially aaron taylor johnson and jake gyllenhaal uh yeah yeah, I mean, I Aaron think Taylor that Johnson was nominated for this film. I'm he sure. won a Golden Globe nominated. for it. Um, he won the Golden Globe. He won the wow. Golden Globe. Yeah. Uh, but at the Oscars, they nominated Michael Shannon instead of him, and they didn't hmm, win. Interesting. Yeah, it was weird. I feel like that's a total snub because I think that this yeah, is that's a total an snub. incredible performance. Um, it is incredible, especially that's Aaron Taylor Johnson. I mean, that's the guy from Kick Ass. Like. <laughs> exactly i mean that's the guy i love from kick-ass he's just such a sweetheart in kick-ass and then you you <laughs> throw him into this and he is the most disgusting character ever like i just hate him in this movie yeah it, he's so good like it, it's a really really strong performance um mm-hmm. yeah and him and jake Hall play off each other really well uh jake Hall is like maddening good in this film like, like one of his especially best in the performances stories, oh my god it's incredible like when he's actually br- at the breaking point in the like like the highway scene and then when he's actually like confronting ray when he has that moment with michael shannon like he is incredible in this movie and i'm gonna be honest like amy adams she didn't really do much for me in this film like and i, I think the biggest thing is she didn't really have a whole lot to do like she was good i'm not saying she was bad she just like i wish they had given her a bit more yeah because i don't know i just wasn't like nothing in her performance was like really impressive to me but like i don't i don't care because aaron taylor johnson and jake Gyllenhaal and her hall were so good that it's like i mean i wouldn't even necessarily call her performance bad i would just say her character is not written the best because i think that yeah her performance is like is still very strong um yeah totally but yeah i mean i just think that she didn't necessarily have the writing uh, I uh, dude, I love Michael Shannon too. Like, yeah, he was really good. He's like, uh, yeah, he's just so, he gives he has such an amazing accent. Um, gives off like that Lone Ranger kind of vibe. Uh, yeah, yeah, especially near the end too, when he's like almost pretty much torturing Ray and Lou. Uh, yeah, really good. I also love the actor who plays Lou. Like, I know he's not a major character, but just oh. <laughs> solid yeah. supporting performance. <laughs> sure totally i mean yeah i I just think that this film has some of the strongest performances uh i've seen so far in our quest to watch all the films on the wheel uh (laughs) yeah i mean i think this is like in terms of uh specific performances i think that jake gyllenhaal probably gives like one of the best ones we've seen so far and aaron taylor johnson also so i feel like i'm giving it full marks it's like a low 10 uh but i mean these they're two like of my favorite performances of anything we've seen so yeah 10 out of 10 yeah yeah i agree uh i don't know i would say the master is still a little better acting wise but um yeah yeah, 
I feel like uh, the master is just more this... consistent with the supporting cast. Uh, but like, yeah. I think like, uh, I don't know. Walking, walking Phoenix walking. and Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's Hawking. close. It's really close. It's yeah. Close. Um, yeah, I I give acting ten out of ten too. I mean, like, it, I, I was debating giving this nine out of ten because I did feel like some of the supporting characters, like the like her assistants at the art gallery and stuff, were kind of not the best. Um, yeah actors but, i mean they have but, like yeah a couple lines like i don't know yeah they have a couple lines it's like jake john hall aaron taylor johnson michael shen like they take it for me here 10 out of 10 the acting is superb uh let's move on entertainment value out of 10 man this film is so gripping and so intense definitely one of the most entertaining films we've seen so far at least once you get past kind of the first 20 minutes maybe uh yeah it's just you're in there you really like there's so many different stories that you're following uh which just makes you like ultra invested because you want to see how susan's relationship is going to go like you know you want to see what's going to happen between her and army hammer what's is she going to reconnect with edward but you also are so connected to the character of tony like you want to see him get revenge uh I, i mean yeah this this film is just captivating uh, you care about the characters in all three storylines so, so much. Um, yeah, and totally. it's just a super action-packed two hours. Like they waste no time once they get into it. Uh, oh yeah, there's very very few slow scenes, uh, or even the slow scenes they have like major consequences. Like even the some of the mm-hmm. conversational scenes, you feel like they're just very important, uh, especially yeah. between like Tony and Bobby uh like sure they might just be having breakfast but it's like like such an important conversation that you're still invested in it um yeah i mean i was honestly like terrified to rewatch like that highway scene because like the first time i watched it i was like it just like took a toll on me and Mm -hmm. i mean even this time i was like it was so suspenseful but so entertaining at the same time this entire film is very gripping um it's not too long either it's like i think a really good length me for too. a thriller i think it's paced like, it, it's super just two well. hours yeah paced super well um yeah i mean really entertainment value the only thing for me is like the first like 15 minutes exactly. other than that this film is like yeah. top-notch entertainment um I yeah i agree one of the most entertaining I, films we've done i can't quite give it full marks just because i think they could have opened it stronger but honestly yeah this could have been the first full marks if they if it had like a nice opening uh, because yeah, there's I literally agree. no downtime throughout the entire film. Uh, so yeah, I gave it a nine percent. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, multiple storyline films are like super high scoring because they just have so much more, like, depth to what you're watching. Like you, you're so much more interested because you have so much stuff to follow. So I think that boosts it. Yeah, sure totally yeah i gave it a 9 out of 10 also very entertaining film very close to a 10 mm-hmm. um yeah overall technical achievement out of 15 uh yeah what you uh, what are your thoughts uh like i gave the uh, cinematography like a low nine a decent nine and the editing a six i think that technically this film is super strong uh but i also think that it's not like the most crazy when it comes to the technical aspects like i think that uh it's not not like simple but i think with the cinematography they're not really out here innovating uh or really doing that many like technically cool shots i think like it's more of like the artistic beauty of the shots that's like captivating uh so i couldn't quite give it like the 14 uh i gave it a 13 percent um i just you know it's not quite on the level as some of the 14s i've given in terms of technical achievement but it's still like a very very strong solid technical movie uh yeah 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 i agree i mean i i gave them all just one off marks but i do agree that they're all kind of lower um yeah i mean it's really well done technically it's very solid and like even um like better than solid at some points but um yeah i agree it's it's not it's not just it's not quite there to get that 14 um but yeah 13 out of 15 it's a high 13 for me but yeah, yeah. it's just like when you look at the fact that we gave children and men the 14 percent. i just can't put this on the same plane yeah i agree yeah so um yeah we'll okay. tally up our final scores and uh 
spin that wheel and see what we're reviewing next week after a quick break. Nice. Okay. All right. We got our we tallied up our scores. scores. Yes. Tallied up. Yep. Uh, I guess I'll go first. Okay. Um, one of my higher scores for sure. Uh, yeah. Overall, I gave Nocturnal Animals an 88%. Uh, super, super solid. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it like in my top 10, you know, like my favorites. Uh, but I think it's just yeah. a really, really solid movie. Um, really love it. Would definitely rewatch it again. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm totally. honestly excited to see if Tom Ford makes any other directorial moves because yes, I'd, me too. It'd be hype. Um, yeah, we were very close today. I gave it an 89%. Um, we were very close. Yeah, I mean this this is just. It's a really solid film, and I, I won't lie. When I first graded this film, I was way too easy on it. I gave it like a super high grade. Like when I tallied it up, I was like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. this is way too high." <laughs> let me let yeah. me take take a step back here. Um, yeah, but like on for like when I just watched this movie, it was like super, just like so good. Um, and yeah, that means that this film has dethroned Inglorious Bastards from the top three. Uh, Dang. Honestly, kind of thank okay. God. I think we kind of were a little too easy on Inglorious Bastards, uh, but eh, actually, I love yeah, Inglorious Bastards. Pretty, yeah, it's a pretty good. It's really good. A great movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah. If, so if that this means, cracks yeah, our not... top three, averaging um, out at eighty-eight point five percent, third place. Awesome. Yeah. I love super, it. Super, super strong film. Uh, I definitely kind of agree with where it's at. Um, it's not as good as the master. It's not as good as Children of Men, but it's yeah, definitely up I there. Agree. Uh, super hyped to see. That's our twentieth episode. We're eighteenth uh, film, I guess, that we've reviewed. Yeah. So I guess we'll see what our nineteenth is right about now. Got that? Uh, got that wheel ready, Lucas? Ooh, yes, I do. Nice. Um, okay, let's pull up Quick Time Player. Um, Turn up the volume. Let's position my mic so we can hear the volume. Okay. And we are... Okay, we are spinning in three. Oh, nope, we're already spinning. Never mind. Here we go. Exciting stuff. Just wanted to be spun. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. We have landed on a movie called Inside Lilwyn Davis. Ooh. Uh, Coen Brothers movie. Coen yeah, Brothers Coen movie. Brothers. Great movie. Um, yeah, I haven't seen this in a while. I watched it maybe, like, I was on a bit of a Coen Brothers spree after I watched Barton Fink last year. Uh, right. I think I watched this, like, right at the start of quarantine. Um, yeah, Oscar Isaac film. Uh and Carrie Mulligan, two of my favorite actors. Yeah. Love Carrie Mulligan. Love Oscar Isaac. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in a while, but I, I I do think that this is one of the top notch Coen Brothers films. I think it's a very underrated film, actually. Um, yeah, totally yeah. agree. It's funny. It's a really funny movie. Uh, I'll just read out the plot summary really quickly. Okay. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Lewin Davis. A former merchant marine is a folk singer from Greenwich Village, New York City. Uh, he struggles to maintain his artistic independence against the commercial needs of the music industry. Yeah, so I mean, this is one of the first Coen Brothers films that isn't doesn't have cinematography from Roger Deakins, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm a huge Coen Brothers fan, and. Uh, I really like this movie. I'm excited to rewatch it. Yeah, I I really like this movie. I was actually watching a video the other day that someone named this their all time favorite movie. I was like, wow, really? Um, and definitely I would not say that. Now. But yeah, but I like I want to rewatch it now because I feel like I'm, maybe I'm gonna look at it differently because uh, I watched this like a while ago. So yeah, yeah so. I'm interested. Okay. Right. Uh, well, yeah, that basically sums up our uh, our. Uh, thing 
our, our podcast <laughs> our review <laughs> Nocturnal, of Nocturnal Animals. Animals. Uh, thank you for film. listening. Yeah, 18th yeah. film. Coming to you with Inside Lulu and Davis next week, our first Going Brothers film. Very excited. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah, cool. See you guys then. Thank you for listening to Slightly Qualified Film Students. Make sure to tune in next week for a new film discussion and review. Our theme song is Slightly Sexy by Thompson Springs. Make sure to subscribe and leave us a like. Send us feedback and comments as well as your thoughts on the film. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at S underscore Q underscore F underscore S. If you would like to send us a question or a comment for next week's episode, you can email us at sqfilmstudents at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Bye.